resounding welcome. Thanks for that. That's good. Oh, yeah. Welcome, folks. Everything is live. <laughs> Can I drink this as here for sure? This is it. Nick, um, can I start by asking you, is there any further update? We had the withdrawals we heard about yesterday. No, no, nothing at all. Nothing to add to what's been already said. I think the players, though, that, that had to withdraw, they probably wouldn't have started anyway. Is that fair? Uh, no, Harry Arter had been playing regularly. I went to watch him. He played, he played as a sitter against Nottingham Forest and was excellent. And... and I've just asked a question in there about midfield players. Uh, prior to the last couple of weeks, Glenn Whelan hadn't got a club. Jeff Hendricks hadn't been playing. Connor started the season, had missed a couple of games. James McCarthy was in and out. So the midfield player situation was uh, kind of open, really. Uh, so Harry Arter got a good chance. Josh, Josh is still here. He was, you know, that was a disappointing one, having been played regularly. But the, subsequently, Glenn's got a club. Um, Jeff's played two games. Connor's played in the week, scored a couple of goals, got on into Saturday. You know, the midfield suddenly has had more games, thankfully. And does that imply that it's less open now? just implies that the lads who've been playing have played some games and if I want to select them, I'm quite happy to do so. And is it this sort of game and this sort of opposition that you wanted Glenn Whelan to be available for? That's sort of suggesting I'm going to play him. It's a good question. Um, it's the sort of game that I actually wanted the experienced players to be fit. And if James McCarthy, who I'd been to watch twice now, 23s and against Colchester. Experienced players, not debutants playing in it. Uh, so I'm glad, I'm glad that Connor's got back in playing. I'm glad that Jeff has, I'm, I'm certainly delighted that uh, Glenn has had his two games now at Hearts. In case you needed to be reminded, it says in the, the media guide in your first uh, term in charge, your last match was Switzerland. Yeah. And your only defeat at the Aviva, and I know you've spoken about it before, that it, it's something that bugs you, but how do you get that across to the players? Well, yeah, it, it, does it bug me? I, I don't know, I've probably had about another 300 games since then and won, drawn and lost plenty, you know. Um, yeah, it would have been nice to leave on a win because I was going anyway with that Switzerland game. It don't bother me. 17 years ago, See, there'll be no players in that team that played then, and I think the managers have changed a few times since. So, honestly, Tony, it doesn't it doesn't really rankle with me. This is it's a different game. Point is though that you had a, a good record at the Aviva at Lansdowne Road as it was, and you want to maintain that, I'm sure. Well, I still I still do, don't I? The fact that I lost the one game, I mean, in competitive games, I think I still have a good record, to be quite honest. Um, I hope we can improve on that on Thursday evening. When you heard that Shakiri wasn't going to be available for them, what was your first thought? Uh, it's a bit like when the draw was made, when we, we didn't get Holland and Germany and we suddenly got Switzerland and Denmark. That You know, you, you, your first reaction is, oh, great, and then you realise that there's still two good teams we've got to play, and you realise that Denmark, has, uh, sorry, Switzerland, have still got some excellent players. But if, you, if you're going to analyse the game and, and, and try and counteract Shakiri, I think he's pretty difficult to do that because he can drift out of the games, and he's got that wonderful, that wonderful. He wanders about the pitch, and suddenly all he does, he, he, he explodes, and he does something magnificent. Well, you can't. It's hard to predict that, and it's hard to counteract that. So maybe it'll be easier to... I'm not suggesting for one minute the player that plays is any less than him, but I don't think he'll be the same that does that off-the-cuff stuff that, that you're just not expecting. And finally for me, do you, do you think, depending on the week, hopefully going OK, no injuries and that, that you've set in your mind who you want to start on Thursday? 
Providing everybody's okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Mick, just on that, uh, Shane Long didn't get the call up. Is the door still open for him, or do you feel it might be the end of his international career? <laughs> no, the the, uh, the chance to play for Ireland, and he's, he's made many appearances, and he's, what is he, sixth or seventh in line of ice goal scorers, is still very much there for him, as it is for Robbie Brady, who, you know, has a rib injury and he can't play. Uh, I would have thought, if anybody analyses the players that are in the squad, that the strikers that I picked were all been playing. And I'd actually, you know, David McGoldrick started in the Premier League, Rob did, he scored in the Premier League, James Collins came up with, well, actually, it was Sean Maguire, but he was playing regularly and scoring. Uh, Scott Hogan started scoring. Uh, Shane just wasn't playing in any, in any games. So my logic is, and the way I want players to play is they need to be in playing. Working on that then, how concerned are you that Shane Duffy didn't start for Brighton and they're playing a new system now with three centre-halves and he was on the bench at the weekend? It's the first game he's missed, isn't it? I think it's brilliant because he's fit and raring to go for me. Do you think, I mean, do you honestly believe that if, because they're playing three centre-backs, I tell you what, I'm worried going forward that he might not get back in the team if they're playing really well. And that'll be a travesty for him because he's been brilliant for Brighton. But they're playing a different system and if the manager thinks that the other three are better than him at it, then so be it. But in, in regards to this game, it means he's here, he's fit, he's not carrying anything and he should be, he should be great on Thursday night. And do you rate Switzerland as the top team in this group? And if so, why? I, I rate Switzerland and Denmark as the top two teams in this group. And... Their UEFA, FIFA rankings, whatever they are, would would ratify that, certainly. And just watching them play. They've been one of the top top teams in Europe for a long time, not winning things, but always at the competitions, always doing well in them. And the manager's been there a while. They've got a good system the way they play, uh, and they've got good players within that system playing for good clubs. So, yeah, those two are the top two teams. We've had... A start that I would, we, we had to get the points that we got. Denmark was a bonus, but we had to get nine points from the other three games. Two Gibraltar games and Georgia here. We've got harder games to come. I'm under no illusions, and that starts on Thursday. <clears throat> Hi, Mick. Oh, yeah. Would you take a point right now? From where? Georgia? But Suns on Thursday. So I ask a silly question, I'll just give you one back. <laughs> uh, I probably would, yeah. Mm. Not that we're going to try and get that. But bearing in mind the points that we've got already and if we remained unbeaten to the end of the time. They're a good side. Not setting up to get a draw. We're going to try and win the game. But if it, turned, if it turns out we end up with a point, I'll be happy at not being beaten, yeah. Mm. What have you made of Switzerland so far in the group and what challenge will they present on Thursday? Well, they were 3-0 up against Denmark and we just watched that again. How the, how the score ended up 3 all is beyond me, so you, could you say that they ended up being... Did they get a bit milky at the end? Did they get a bit carried away? Did they get overconfident? But Denmark had a very good side as well. Uh, and they were unfortunate, they went 1-0 down to a handball. Shouldn't have been a goal. But they, got, they play a good system, the three at the back, the two wing backs, although Zuba's missing. And, uh, and Babar is very, very good. The strikers, although I know they're missing Shakiri, they've a good way of playing, they've been a settled way of playing. They've got a, they're very well organised, disciplined, and they work very, very hard. They've been, they've been together for a long time. Are they beatable? Of course, yeah. Tell me a team that's not. Will that be the message to the players this week then, that this is a winnable game? Yeah, yeah, yes, of course. I don't go around telling them things like that, you know. If, when we're having a chat, we're having a meeting there, of course they are beatable. It's, it's telling them that almost seems like I've been thinking they're unbeatable. I'm trying to convince them that 
something that they've been thinking of otherwise, which I'm not. I just think if we play to our optimum, we'll have to do, and we'll have to be uh, good with the ball and I think better without the ball because they can move it. They've got good players. Yes, of course, I think any team's beatable. Cheers, Mick. Uh, Mick, Jeff Hendrick has been a, a regular for you since you came back, but he hasn't been a regular in the Premier League for Burnley this season. Is that much of a concern for you? No. Myself. Because he played, he played in the behind closed doors game. He played in the cup game the other night. And Jeff's one of the most athletic players I've seen. One of the fittest guys I've had around the place. The, the distances he covered in the games that we had. And he looks great. He'll be fine. Uh, if you do have any um, uh, tight selection That's calls... That's assuming I pick him, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you do have any tight selection calls uh, and it comes down to what a player has done for you in the qualification, qualification campaign thus far versus the minutes in their legs at the beginning of this season, what would you place more importance in? Well, experience is certainly... Uh, key, I think, in these games. Um, and I do like, I am loyal to people, certainly to the ones that perform when they turn out and they play. So it's, uh, you've, got a, you've got a head start if you've been in the team, that's for sure, you've been playing. Uh, were you disappointed that James McCarthy didn't link up with the squad? Or you can, understand, can you understand where he's coming from? I can understand where he's coming from. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't get up and disappointed by it. I just, it's, it's the way it is, you know. Um, it, uh, not really, because he wouldn't have played in this game. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have played in this game. Just not physically ready, or I don't think he is. No, he wouldn't have played. He wouldn't have played. So whatever, whatever way you want to put it, physically ready, of course, that's it. Because mentally, he's ready. He's, he's a good, he's a, he's a good footballer, but he's had no. I think he's had he'd had five games up until the start of this season in two years. Yeah. And then he's come back and he's played he's coming as subs for Palace. I've watched him twice, been to see him in the twenty threes, saw him against Colchester. None of those games will be anywhere near this game that we're playing on Thursday night. Yeah. And um, my last question is is there anything specific that you're hoping to improve on from the previous two home games against George and Gibraltar? Like what kind of things are you stress into the players? Anything? I'm trying to emulate both results. Yeah. And performance-wise, is there anything to, to improve on? It, it, it's, it's, it's interesting that I asked about the performance. We won the games. You know, I, I, I go back whenever there's a, there's a time when it's not going well. You, you want to win the games. So I'd like to think if we had, and we won't have, by the way, as many chances and as many shots and as many crosses as we did against Gibraltar, I'd like to think that we'd have scored more goals, of course. Yeah. But still in the game, that's the hardest thing to do. But we did have a hell of a lot of attempts in that game. Georgia, I'd take that performance now. Did you think we didn't play well against Georgia? Oh, I, thought, I, thought, I thought it was good. We just brought that up in our performance against Georgia. Yeah. See, I remember what I'm saying. Do you? Yeah. I was just wondering... Yeah, Georgia. Georgia was a great performance. Georgia was excellent. And I'd take that now. I would take that performance. Uh, Gibraltar. You know, we won. It was job done, that's all. Cheers. Mick. <coughs> Sorry, Mick. Um, the squad arriving here, um, I suppose they're all coming in at different stages at the, cl the club. Some might, some clubs are struggling, some are struggling to get game time. While um, some, like the, the Sheffield United lads, must be coming with just sort of bouncing in and bringing that sort of confidence. Yeah, to you know, it's always great when, you, when you're playing at your club level, irrespective of where your club's going and your, your club form's going. This is... A real relief. You leave all, you park all that. Even if you're flying, even if you're Sheffield United and you started well, or even if you're a club that's at the bottom of the league, it's it's a blessing to get away from it and come and see your mates. And have eight, nine, ten days away. Enjoy that. It's brilliant. And I've and I've been in both scenarios as a player. And you just you can forget that for a while. You park it until you go back. So it's great. It's great for the lads. So you don't you don't need to. Talk to different players. Counsel them all differently. You think it just all right? No, I, I have that. I have that conversation with them as much as anything. It's not in a 
an official way. It's an adult. I'll go and sit with somebody and have a cup of coffee. You know, how's it been going? Uh, not great, but, you know, James, James McLean was the classic, and he said, oh, it's been tough, but, you know, I hope the, I hope the gaffer stays. His, his coaching's good, and he's, he's positive about that. It's great to be here, you know. I can come and crack on here now, and then we'll go back to that. It, it's, it's, it's lovely to have. It's worse for the lads who are not away. It's worse for the lads who are back there and at the bottom of the league and they're getting drilled every day. It's, it, that's tough. And so just um, just to pick up earlier what you said about Shakiri, he's got the impression where that type of player is, I suppose, a, a manager's uh, nightmare to, to plan against. How much would you like a player like that that you could tro drop into the into the team, even as an impact, impact sub? And would that be some perhaps a reason why Jack Byrne has kept his place in the squad? Would it be, be a type of player who you think could do something? Yeah, we got Jack Byrne likened to Shakiri now as well, so that'll be, uh, be some good headlines. Uh, if Jack played in that position, but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't play off the striker. I said before, if uh, I went to watch him there the other day, and he's he's not like that. Teo did, Alan Judge did in Denmark. Judge he was a different class. He changed the game for us. Coming on as a sub, playing in behind Scott Hogan, they found it difficult to pick him up. He he won the free kick, he produced the free kick. So uh, he's got something to offer as well. And has Alan got enough game time this year to really be a, a force to be? Judge has, yeah, he's played, yeah. He's played the last two games, I think, fully, and coming as a sub, he's, yeah, he's OK. And just to, just to finish, um, just with points on the board, um, there's so many different ways of looking at it, but there is a gap, and you'll still be top of the, of the, of the group ahead of this game. But, just in compare as a manager, as a manager, um, do you get any sort of psychological advantage of being having that bit of distance between yourself and your counterparts? No. But if I was six points behind, I might have a psychological disadvantage looking at them. But I'm, not when I'm. You never do, because you always look at everybody else's games and think, "Oh, they can win that. They can win that. When they can win that." But when you when you're behind, when you're six, seven points behind. You don't quite have the same thing. You think we better win that, and we need to win that. And we need to get points there. There's a, there's a different way of looking at it. We've got we've got the points from the games we we needed to get, and we should have got. Denmark being a real bonus. Last couple of questions, please. Hi, Mick. How's it going? Good. Um, How are you? Good. Good. Uh, yesterday marked uh, the 18th anniversary since we beat Holland. Um, just in regards to that victory is probably one of your biggest in, in that reign. Uh, will you be looking to use that as extra motivation now this week for the Switzerland game? I might do now you've told me about it. <laughs> I, got, I got no idea. Absolutely no idea that it was 18 years since that it was even remotely close to the time or date or whenever it was. It does tell you how much I think about that. It's gone now, it's in the past. You won't be showing them any videos of it or anything, you know? What if... No, no. No, I, I don't think he's had any bearing on it. I don't think he does. I think, I'd, I'd tell you, I'd sooner pick bits out of the game against Georgia and bits out of the game against Denmark and show them that, that what they're doing, not what somebody else is doing. I'm, I'm not really big on that, you know, <coughs> historically showing them Jason McAteer's goal. And... No. OK, no worries, thank you. It's OK. Um, just in terms of Enda Stevens as well, he's the only kind of natural left back from kind of the defenders list in the squad. Um, who's kind of next in line in your thinking? James McLean, if we have a problem. If I had a problem and Enda, uh, God forbid, got in injured in train, I've got Greg Cunningham on standby. But I didn't want to have two left backs because if, if it goes wrong in the game and for some reason he has to go off or God forbid get sent off, I'd play James there. Um, so he's his next in line.